Right. Good morning, everybody. Um, some of you may have heard me just a second ago in the main theatre, but in case you didn't, um, Transport Focus, we're the independent watchdog for Britain's um, transport users. We're, a consumer, we're unashamedly a consumer organisation. We aim to be useful to all of you in your jobs to help you. And we produce a lot of evidence. And I think what we're bringing to the stage today is three very important pieces of evidence that are going to form part of the benchmarking of Highways England and its activity in the next five-year road spending period. So I'm very pleased that my colleague Guy, who has driven a lot of the work, along with colleagues who are scattered around here today, is going to just take you through the results from the new Strategic Roads User Survey. If you've got questions afterwards, I think we've got some time to do some Q&A. Otherwise, our stand is over at I-22. Yes, over that way. I think I was pointed to a pond before, actually. But over that way, I-22, where colleagues can continue the discussion. So, Guy, do you want to kick off. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Anthony. Whoops. That is Anthony. That's me. Dreadful picture. So we'll move very quickly on from that dreadful picture. Um, why do we have a new uh, road survey? Um, well, back in the original uh, road investment strategy, RIS1, uh, in uh, 2005, um, it said that the watchdog and transport focus became the watchdog uh, as part of Rose Reform um, will develop a new survey. Um, and that is what we have been doing uh, over the past three years. So it's a big, uh, big day for us and a big day for road users uh, to be able to contribute to the, uh, to, to, to the running of the strategic road network on their behalf. So the purpose of uh, the new survey, it really has um, two, two fundamental purposes. One is to provide a measure of satisfaction amongst the users uh, of, of Highways England's roads, which can be used by the Office of uh, Rail and Road to monitor uh, performance against the target which is set for it by the government uh, through the road investment strategy. Um, and then the second really, really important uh, uh, part, role of SRAS is to provide insight to Highways England uh, and by extension its suppliers um, so that uh, the company can understand the user experience on individual sections uh, of its network. And we think that is so crucial because it will help individual managers within the business really hone in on what their customers think on particular parts of the network, on particular roads, about particular things, and then frankly, do something about it. And it is as simple as that. So, um, it's important to mention the concept of one road. And what we have done to facilitate really that uh, honing down the feedback the customer insight to particular sections of the road network um, is to uh, develop a concept of one road where people are responding about their experience on a particular road on a particular day. Um, and as I say, it is all about tying that user experience back to something which Highways England can then do something practical about to drive improvement in satisfaction the following day or the following week or however soon it may be. So um, why is the new survey better than the old survey? An important uh, question which I know uh, people are asking. Well it has a much bigger sample, uh, eight to nine thousand people uh, will be taking part in the new survey annually uh, whereas the current one is uh, around two thousand. It's a better questionnaire, and in particular, it has an individual question covering overall satisfaction. Uh, the existing uh, satisfaction is a, is a calculation based on the answers to five separate questions. The new survey, it's an all said and done, how satisfied are you uh, with your journey question. User recall is uh, much tighter. We are asking about the previous 28 days rather than the previous year. Um, it's more representative. It is structured and weighted to be representative of usage of Highways England's roads uh, in a way that NRAS is not. There are more lorry drivers in it. 
Um, around about a thousand lorry drivers will contribute to this survey annually, um, and there are very, very few in the existing survey. Um, the usefulness, I've spoken about how it will be useful, but I can't emphasize enough that this providing data for individual people, uh, for managers within Highways England to do something about, is going to be so crucial to driving up uh, satisfaction in, in the longer term. Okay, so what are we moving on? The other really important thing about SRAS is the access which we are allowing um, not just the general public to, uh, uh, to, but also anyone who is interested in the, in the sector through our new data hub, um, where, where I will just show you a few of the elements of the hub, um, but please come to our stand, I-22, and we can tell you all about it, and you can start playing on the internet with this and cutting the data in, in any which way you like um, straight after we've spoken. So, you now know from Anthony's, uh, uh, Anthony's uh, address that Douglas Adams was wrong. The answer is not 42, but it's in fact 82. Uh, the overall satisfaction being produced after the first five months of the survey is 82%. Um, the, the copies, I think my colleagues in the audience have got copies of this uh, two-sider here, so please, um, they're being held up at the back, so grab one of those. And you will see, those of you who, who were in Anthony's uh, session uh, will have seen how the, uh, it varies around the country with the southwest and the northwest um, sort of up at the top there and the Midlands less good in overall satisfaction. And over the coming months, we'll be delving in to what is behind that, what is causing people in the Midlands to score uh, uh, their satisfaction lower than in other parts of the country. So the Data Hub will present in due course all the, the results of all our um, what we call tracker surveys. And by that we mean that they track the satisfaction of uh, transport users over time. Um, but it starts off today with the new Strategic Roads User Survey and our Bus Passenger Survey. Um, and we really do think this will revolutionise the ability of individual bits of Highways England to get under the skin of what users think and do something about it. So, just a, a few uh, snippets, uh, 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 snippets uh, from the hub. This is what it would look like when you go onto the internet and, uh, and look, at, uh, uh, look at the site. It's uh, transportfocus.org.uk slash data hyphen hub. Um, so do, do have a look at that and you get the key measures in addition to overall satisfaction displayed there. Now what you will notice with, my, uh, uh, with the ring round the, uh, there in the top right hand corner is it says compare results. So supposing you wanted to compare the national number with a few of the Highways England regions and see how they're doing, you can do that by selecting which regions you want in, on the left hand side there with the green ring, um, and it will display the data for individual regions as well as the national number. Um, another feature of the hub is you can look not just at the overall satisfaction question, but you can pick any question in the survey and see how that data differs by whatever parameters you've, uh, you've asked about. Individual road. Uh, this will be a key feature uh, of, of the data hub and indeed of the survey itself. The ability to look at what people are thinking about individual parts of the network rather than just the whole. So um, if you were interested in the M25, and I know Richard Westcott made a remark about the M25 earlier, um, these are the scores uh, for the headline figures uh, for the M25. Uh, and you'll see it's five percentage points lower than the national number. Now, um, it's an interesting uh, illustration of a feature of SRUS and of the data hub here, which I'll just mention. You'll see there is no number for management of roadworks there. Um, and that's quite deliberate because um, the system suppresses 
uh, results where there are fewer than 75 uh, people have answered that question. Um, and that number, that will obviously build up over time and there'll be fewer and fewer uh, instances where that happened. But it's a very important protection to make sure that um, uh, people don't take numbers out of context based on the views of a very small number of people. So that is built into the system. One of the, uh, a few of the other features just to mention, you can look at the data uh, by uh, whether road users identified as having a disability or not. Um, and you'll see that uh, uh, there, that is the, the, the number for disability, uh, disabled road users, a bit lower than the national uh, average. So there's a whole load of things you can do with the Data Hub, uh, and we would strongly encourage you to uh, come and see us at our stand, start to learn what this data can do for you in your jobs to understand what users are thinking, and think through and implement solutions which will result in higher satisfaction another day. Um, we will be running demonstration sessions on the stand throughout the day, so do come over uh, and, and, be, uh, and have some tuition or indeed just start playing with it uh, of your own accord. So, SRUS is live. Uh, it will be uh, reporting new data every month from now onwards and the picture will become richer and richer as time goes by. Please now start to use it to drive up satisfaction for users. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. And um, I'm very pleased to say that the Minister, Jesse Norman MP, has joined us in the audience. And the support that the government has given us over the last three years in, in, in amplifying the user voice has been very powerful and very helpful. So thank you for that, because I think you do actually mean it, which is great, because here we are, it's happening. So that's fantastic. Now, questions, please. Can you put your hand up and identify who you are and if you're representing an organisation? And we've got a, my colleague Lee's got a roving mic. Now, who would like to ask a question? Come on, somebody else. Yes, lady there who I recognise. Thanks, Anthony. Uh, Deborah Fox from Transport for West Midlands. Mm. And uh, I'm uh, set the interesting challenge of demand management on our roads in the West Midlands and also on the public mm. transport network. So I'm just thinking how might we pull the insight and, uh, and what I find very exciting about this new road user survey through the key route network and onto local roads. Perhaps there's some knowledge sharing to be done with local authorities on how they might apply new tools to measure and change the satisfaction of their road users. Gosh, it sounds like the end of the world has started outside, but don't worry about it. I'm sure um, we'll float away somewhere. Um, very good question. Of course, this is focused on the strategic road network, but the methodology that underlies it and the, the kit that we've developed for this is totally applicable to the major road network which is coming, your key road network in the West Midlands or in Manchester, and of course the local road network beyond. So if you'd like to see Guy afterwards, we'll do you a two-for-one deal and um, extend this. But of course the, the principles and what users are saying about their experience, hopefully one day this will apply right across the road network. But demand management is going to become more and more important, clearly. Next question, please. Yes, question there, please. Hello, I'm Owen Wilson from Transport for the North. Um, right. I've got a question about user segmentation. As the sample size grows, um, will you be able to look at different users and how their perception may be different depending on, on the type of, of road user? That sounds technical. I'll ask Guy to answer that one. Uh, yeah. Hello. Yes, so in, um, in addition to what you might expect to be the usual demographics by which you, you could cut a survey of this nature, um, we have uh, all sorts of things like uh, whether you're driving a car, a van, motorcyclists, there's a whole range of things that you'll be able to look at the data and see how uh, different groups of users' views differ uh, from, from the whole. One of the things I'm really proud about about this is that we've got the lorry user driver voice properly represented in this. I don't think we treat lorry drivers very well in this country given their importance to the whole economy. And so finally we're getting a really good, strong voice from those people who are doing a lot of kilometres on the road network. Next question, please. Come on, don't be shy. Very nice audience. Yes, 
gentleman there. Thank you. Hi, uh, Lewis Hill from Ipsos Murray, the research company. Um, really, really interesting. Sorry, uh, really interesting presentation. Thank you. Sorry, I'm Lewis Hill from Ipsos Murray, the Hi. research company. Ah. Um, how, how are you ensuring that the uh, sample is representative of, of SRN users? I mean, one of, I guess one of the things is that it's quite a difficult thing to profile, so I'm just interested what you're weighting the data to and to ensure yeah. that it's uh, representative. Yeah. Guy, how is this representative? Well, you can see my colleague in the audience for all the technical detail, um, but it, it, essentially, um, it is uh, we, we are waiting. It, it is designed to be representative of usage of the strategic road network, um, and so we are waiting to vehicle kilometres on the section of the road concerned at the time uh, that the person made their journey, so that their journey counts in the correct proportion. Uh, of overall usage of the SRN. And um, to get ever so fractionally technical, uh, every journey goes into one of nine uh, boxes on a weighting matrix, which adds up to total usage of the SRN. Murray, would you like to just wave your hand? This is our colleague this Murray, is who is the, the guru behind all this. So please, you two are a marriage made in heaven. So um, talk to each other afterwards, please. Next question. Go on. Come on, somebody. You must have a burning question. All right. I'll ask Guy a question. Guy, what do you think this will look like in a year's time when we come back? I think one of the things we will be able to do um, by the time we get to 12 months uh, full, uh, full running, and, and indeed perhaps before, is to start to run uh, what we describe as key drivers analysis, um, the mathematical uh, uh, l looking at you know, what is causing, uh, what are the other questions that people are satisfied or dissatisfied answering in the ways they are and you start to build up a picture of what are the things which make people either very satisfied or fairly satisfied or uh, the small number of people who are actively dissatisfied and start to really help Highways England uh, focus in on you know, the things it needs to do differently. In addition of course to the real richness of um, small things that could be fixed for want of a better description, um, that will come through uh, the survey. Um, it's not just all. No, it's not just numbers. There will be verbatim comments in the survey, which will make, which will be available through the data hub, and just give that bit of colour. What is causing people to score that journey in the way they did? John, what's your? Um, can you do a completely unscientific guess? And what do you think the drivers of satisfaction and dissatisfaction will be? I think it is very likely to be dominated by um, issues around journey time, um, whether that's absolute journey time or journey time reliability, um, and probably manifesting itself um, in um, where there is congestion. Uh, and people are struggling to rely on the journey time, that will probably be the, where their scores are lower than otherwise would be. Yep. Okay. Now, I'm going to be very unfair. I'm going to pick on somebody in the audience. Pete Martin from Highways England. Why, why is this going to be useful to you? Be honest. Is it going to be useful to you? Do you me now? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we fully support the work that's been going on here. Um, why is it going to be more useful for us? I mean, at a simple level, it's a bigger sample size, so it's more representative of the road users that we serve. Um, we, we support the improved methodology, so it's going to give us better data to use. Um, the one road approach, I think, is going to be useful at a regional level. Mm. I think if we look at NRUS now, it works at a national level in terms of looking at what mm. we need to do. Um, it becomes a little less useful once you get down to, to regional level. So mm. with the one road approach, as we build the data up, I think it's going to give our regional teams some something to really go on to understand the differences between mm. roads. So, yeah, we fully support. Good. I should explain Peter's the customer service director, if that's right, at Highways England. So we've been working very closely with him and colleagues on bringing this to the market. So any final question? Go on, somebody have a last question. Great opportunity. No? Nope. Okay, 
thank you very much indeed for listening and go and have a look at our stand i22 and very nice to meet you all thank you